Okay. Hey, look at that. See that? It's open up for Bible to breathe, come Praise the Lord. Lord God, just I pray for D'Angelo, Lord God, and yes. for his family, Lord. Maybe hopefully they're still on their way. Lord, I hope nothing's hindered him. I know Satan's alive and well. I believe in Satan for destruction, for misery. Lord, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, as our light, as our hope. Lord, may now if we open up the scriptures, Lord God, and study about you, study about heaven, study about things of the Bible and nothing else. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. All right. For, uh, I keep wanting to say First John. I don't know why. John chapter 1, verse 12. And so funny how we're talking about to be believe and become sons of God. And here a man became, with his name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, going around telling everybody, he's a, he's a child of God. I mean, it took the heart Amen. and the mouth. And it says in 12, But as many as received him, Jesus, the light, the creator. Now when we, when we look at as many as receive him, all right, the, Jesus. Remarkably, yes, true. But what have we studied from verses 1 to 11? Now beginning on 12, who's the him? It's Jesus, but who is Jesus? He's the creator. Amen. You can't get saved as an evolutionist. He is Jesus, the Word. You've got to have the Word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by... Ah, boy, I blew that one. Even I mess up. Hearing the word of God. Something like that. Jesus, the word that we've looked at, Jesus, the creator, Jesus, who is God. You cannot be here and receive Christ and not believe that he's God. It doesn't work. So when we say that many has received him, it is our ways of to the person we are witnessing to. Now, we don't go through the whole Bible. But we got a standpoint of the things that are marked for a man to be saved. One of them, according to Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, 11 and 12, is you got to believe in the resurrected Christ. If you don't believe in the resurrection, and there are many people out there who don't. And they will say, oh, I'm saved. Well, do you believe Jesus came bodily out of the grave? And even I'm learning this one myself now. No. Do you believe Jesus is God? No. Are you going to heaven? Yes. Well, no, you're not. No, you're not. So that hymn is a very important hymn. It's not just Jesus a name. It's Jesus the man. Jesus God. So many that received him to them, the people that received him, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, I don't know if you ever really thought about it. We're going to look at receive him. You got to receive him. It's not something that your spouse or your parents can do for you, though that's a teaching of religions. The whole idea to have a God parent, God mother, God father, is that when you are a child, you have no classification of anything you're doing in your life. You don't even know you're making a soil in, a, in your diaper. You don't even know that that these people will step in and say, I will stand on the ground for this baby child that doesn't know nothing. Well, that defies John chapter 1, verse 12, because you must receive it. It's not something that anybody else can do for you. And the subject is receive, Romans 10, 9. And we're going to run upon this verse all the times we talk about witnessing and salvation, because this is the key. Paul tells us to the, to the Romans, sorry, Romans, what? Romans 10, 9. So when you have a, as I grew up, a bash of religions as we come along, when you have the Roman Catholic Church comes up and tells you that somebody, a godparent, can, re, can do it for you, and they deny completely the whole book dedicated to their region, to their people, Romans. Now Romans 10, 9. To them that have received, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that's receiving, 
and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. For with, see, now notice, raised from the dead. There's a resurrection. Now what I just learned this week, talking to a few other people, and still I learn, it, that puts away the Jehovah Witnesses. If they have a non-resurrected Christ, they're not saved. Now I've got to call the question, what God put the confusion of me in the Catholic Church that I went to was, yeah, we had resurrection Easter Sunday. Christ came out of that tomb, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But the thing that ever got me is why every 365 days of the year he still nailed to that cross. That's not a resurrection. That's not coming out of the grave. And if you believe in that cross with Jesus nailed to that cross, you don't believe the resurrection because he's still nailed to that cross. You're not saved. So another thing is, if you're witnessing to people, and Tracy's seen it, they'll come up, they'll, they'll flash you to your cross, they'll show you a cross tattoo, they'll show you anything. And then you got to ask them, well, say, okay, that's nice, the real gold, or the fake gold. Do you believe on that Jesus that's on that cross? Yeah. You're not saved. I need to show you the resurrection. I need to show you he's not on that cross no more, according to what we just read. That's right, and verse 10, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, not the head. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We saw the angel last week. Man, he's telling everybody, anybody would listen. Yeah, about Jesus. For the scripture saith, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. And he's not ashamed. He wasn't ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I lift up my mouth. When I preach, it's, it's the testimony of what Jesus Christ has done for me. For the scripture saith, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now remember in John 1.12, whosoever calleth on the name, whosoever believeth on that name. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. And I'm amazed as I study the, the, the hymns in the hymnal. I am amazed on how many hymns do not have the name Jesus. I have been amazing. I don't know how many I've, I've done so far, and very few put J-E-S-U-S. -S. It's interesting. It's a marvelous fact. Acts 16.31. And Paul warns us. I'm looking here to see if we have that. Paul warns us in the Corinthian, 1 Corinthians that there is another Jesus. So we got to be careful in the Jesus that we're preaching. And we got to be careful in the, in the Jesus that's out there and realize there's other Jesus. Believe it or not, in Mexico, there are, I'd say, hundreds of Jesus. I don't know a thousand, but I'd, say, I'd probably say safely. I don't know in this day and age, as we know. But Jesus, the Spanish name for Jesus is given to boys. As much as Maria... The Spanish name of, of, of Mary is given to the little girls. Yeah. So just because you have a Jesus in your family, a Maria in your family, that, that's not going to get you. That's not that name. There's a Mormon Jesus. There's a Catholic Jesus. There's a Jehovah Witness Jesus. There's a Pentecostal Jesus. There's a Jesus that he's not, there's no God, no Holy Spirit. That's impossible, because even Jesus said himself, God is going to raise me up to power. I lay down my life, God will take it up. 1631, Acts. And he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. There are no sacraments. There was no works given by Paul to this Philippian jailer for salvation. And we're late in the book of Acts. We are safely to say, this is it. We don't need to go run into Acts 2.38. That's Jewish. We are talking to a Gentile in a Gentile region by Paul the, the Apostle to the Gentiles. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to tell you something that we say in error. And this was mentioned the other day. You don't tell them to come to your church. You don't invite them into your church for salvation. 
when you deal with something, oh, it's not we go to XXXYZ Church, Baptist. No, it's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's get you saved. Because I would, Lord, forbid for, forbid to think that if you start going to church that God would be happy with you. Because many people believe, I'm going to church. Are you going to heaven? I'm going to church. Are you going to heaven? I've been baptized. Are you going to heaven? Are you going to heaven? See? Okay, that's pretty well. Are you going to heaven? Maybe that's not I what Jesus would I hope so. No, I hope so. That's not what Jesus would do. Are you going to heaven? I would delight for people to see. Mm -hmm. Those are not the answers. Different answers. I am more so for a person who's lost not to attend the church and for the yeah, same only. Because right? the churches are messed up because you've allowed all the unsaved people in. Paul says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And with first, um, I keep wanting to say first John. John 1, 12 says, even that receive. The believing is receiving with John and Paul. 4.12, Acts 4.12. I already quoted this, but this is an important verse. This is one of the first verses you, you, if you want to start remembering. It's simple. 4.12. I can't open the page. The page I tried to open, I need to open. 4.12. Acts 4.12. Now, let me read verse 10. But 4.12 is what we're learning. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name. We've already read that name. There's Jesus. No other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. Now how many people just proclaim Michael Luther King? He, he, he's the great savior of our race. My pastor. This television evangelist. Our Pope. An angel. Many of your false religions are based upon an angel. Those are not the names. Peter has already proclaimed to us that Jesus Christ, what Jesus Christ? Of Nazareth. Well, I can run to my Bible and say, okay, there's only one Jesus of Nazareth. So, re believing, receiving, for there is none other name given. Here is a name that is given that we are to receive. We are to put our trust in faith. Acts 2.21 Receive is what we're talking about now. Receive. It's not going to be done for you. You're not going to live your life out without Christ. Show up at that great all-purpose judgment. And God's going to say, oh, you've been a good goober. Enter. No. Your entrance into heaven when the Christians are called, whether by death to be absent from the body, present with the Lord, but definitely by rapture. Your calling for God calling you out is have you received Jesus Christ? And I've heard people say, you don't say that. That's the perfect thing. Go up to someone, have you ever received Jesus Christ as your Savior? But you must be careful. You've got to explain yourself when you say that. I understand that reason. Because if you ask a Catholic, have you received Jesus Christ? Yeah, I eat and drink them. Well, you're not supposed to receive Christ orally. He's not a pe he's not a medicine. He's not a pill. I take Jesus every twelve hours. <laughs> no. There are people who say, "Well, you know, I've had this experience." Your church, I have this experience. I blabber dooper goo. That's not receiving Jesus. That's receiving tongues. That's, that's your own call. That's what you should call it. And when they spoke in tongues on the Pentecostal. Everybody in the room understood what they said <laughs> in their own language. They spoke in in Hebrew or whatever, and there was Greeks there. There was all, and they all heard heard them talking, but in their language. So if you go to a church and they're all mumbling, jumbling, and you don't understand what they're saying, 
Then they're not speaking in tongues. In Acts 2.21, it shall come to pass that whosoever, you recognize that word? John 3.16, John whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it has to be the name, it has to be the resurrection, it has to be the creator, it has to be God, there is no other name. The, the angel Gabriel told Mary, call his name Jesus, he's been pre-named Jehovah saves. That's what the name That's Jesus right. means. And we'll, now with that, let's go to John 3, 16, just to make sure that you know I'm not misquoting any of the scriptures. John 3.16. And with John 3.16 as you go there, and I, I guarantee someone probably believes this, and Tracy knows what I'm going to say. I can quote John 3.16. Mm -hmm. We have many people who hate the preaching of the cross will quote John 3.16 right back at us as soon as we're set up. Mm -hmm. oh, Quoting oh, Scripture... Quoting Scripture will not save you. Satan quoted That's Scripture. Right. Go back and read Matthew and Luke chapter 4 when he's throwing Scripture at Jesus. Did not Psalm say this? Did not Deuteronomy say this? Did not? So, another thing. Oh, I fear God. James says, so do the devils and they tremble. You have no fear of God. You're not trembling. You're mocking. So John 3.16 for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, there it is, believeth in Him, believe, notice the word, keep going, believing, receiving, believing in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There's God's call, there's God's love, there is the sacrifice. I mean, if a guy tells a woman, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, and never does anything, never gives anything, where is the benefit, the proof of the love that you have? John 3.36, at the end of the chapter. You're going to find believing and receiving are identical. He that believeth on the Son, capital S, has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son, capital S, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Believing. We read in John Whosoever shall receive him. We've been reading the scriptures, Romans, Acts, John. Again, we're here we are. Receiving and believing. Now, you get a person that comes up to you, religion-wise, I don't believe in Jesus. There's no salvation. Because that's that name, Acts 4.12. You get somebody that comes up and uses Jesus' name as a cuss, that's not what it was intended for. There's probably no salvation there. There's that one name is not given for cussing. It's given for glorification of God to salvation. That, hey, God loved me. He gave His Son, and His Son is named Jesus. And if I were to receive Him, I had to believe in Him, I get eternal life to be with God in Jesus Christ forever. I haven't gotten to where are the children of God. That's another time. Re uh, Revelation 3.20. We'll go to the end of the book. All the way to the end of the book. The last book, which is written by John. The same John of the Gospel of John is the same John that writes and get revealed to him the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not ever the revelation of John, by the way. It's the revelation of Jesus. Revelation 3.20 Behold, I stand at the door. That's the church door. We're not going to get into the Laodicean church age. But that's the Laodicean church age. That's today. Notice he's not in the church. He's outside the church knocking. Now, I'm in my house, I'll knock on the door for Rachel and I can have fun and play time like that. But we had a guy come to our house yesterday. He, he was, didn't knock on the inside of the door, he knocked on the outside. He's on the outside of the church. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, you're witnessing to him. You're telling him. 
about salvation. And open the door. Hey, come on in. We saw that last week. I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. So here's the invitation. I'm knocking. You would receive Jesus in, in this verse here by, okay, Lord, I'm going to join you and leave everybody else. If everybody else is not going to come to you, Jesus, I'm going to step out. I'm going to receive you. And then Christ will receive you by your belief. Hey, he's the one. Now, it's not a general receive, you know, I received Jesus, boom, 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 all done, balloons, and everything like that. No, you got to have it with the heart, and you got to have it with the mouth. But that is the way to receive Christ. You cannot not miss it in the Bible because we just read it in John 1, 12. But, you know, people hate the easy believism, and I do. I hate it. But I'm not going to misquote the Bible so I can shoot down the doctrine. I'll shoot down with easy believing and said, yes, have you received Christ as your Savior? John 1, 12. See, look, here's what it says. All right, I'm going to run you over Romans 10, 9 and 10. I'm going to show you what receiving. Have you ever done this? Oh, no, I said a prayer. Can you show me in the Bible where it's just saying a prayer? No. I can show you many people in the Bible who prayed. They were wrong and going to hell. Uh... King Saul, oh, so, Samuel, I'm so sorry I got caught. Oh, please, please forgive me. Please ask God to forgive me. Ask your God to forgive me. Your God? Not your God? <laughs> when you read the Old Testament, look for that. Look for the mm -hmm. thy or my when you talk about the talking to a prophet. Because if it says thy God, why isn't he yours? That's right. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that a lot of times. So here is Jesus Christ knocking on the door. I did not receive that guy at the door yesterday because I didn't want his junk. And anybody comes knocking on our doors, it's usually a scam. But I didn't receive him. I turned him away, like many of the world will do. But when Jesus Christ came knocking on my door, on my heart, on April 21st, 1987, I said, Lord, come on in. Let's, let's dine with a Bible showing me exactly who he was. Mark 16, 16. Mark 16, 16. And this day and age, and primary, it's primarily written to us Christians, these studies, but, but we're also seeing, I want you to see, because we're people, we go out and tell people about Jesus. Remarkably, we do. And there are so many, Tracy's seen it, there are so many things that people believe and trust are not right. Now we got to pick up and we got to explain to them. Because there, look how many, uh, Tracy sometimes will be driving around, but there's a church, there's a church, and here a church, everywhere a church, 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 and many people go off the broad way that leads to destruction. Thanks right. to one of the ways they lead off in the broad way of destruction is they will go to a church. Synagogue, hall, or whatever they believe in, or their prayer mat. Or their yoga mat. Yoga and all that is, is, is a religion. And it's allowed in schools. And it's allowed in schools. Mm. Schools yeah. become a religion. I don't know if you know or not, they don't teach anything no more. They promote. They evangelize. You ought to put church in front of the public. To remove public school and put the church school or whatever. So let's look at Mark 16, 16. As Jesus has ascended... I mean, Jesus is resurrected. He's going to be ascended to God in Acts chapter 1. His last thing to his disciples, one of the last words. He that believeth, I mean, yeah, 16. He that believeth is baptized, shall be saved. Now, this verse matches John uh, 3.36. And he that believeth not shall be damned. All right. Believeth is first. Baptism is next. There's no baptism for salvation. Now I heard that uh, we call them water dogs, but the Church of Christ, there's one right down the road here. I have not met as many Church of Christ as I thought I would down here in Florida. But by the training and the location of the training I've been taught, it must be over in the Panhandle area where a lot of, a lot of Jehovah Witnesses are the problem down here. But there are people that you will talk to 
And what saved their soul, what they're relying on to get saved, is water. Jesus said, now, you got something like that? He said, well, how do I handle this? I'm scared. Take the chapter that says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Mark 16, say, hey, well, what did Jesus say? He says, he that believeth and is baptized. Well, say, you know, baptism is saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. That's why, that's why it's so bad that the Catholics in most religions baptize children. I know. Little babies. Little babies. Baptize little babies. Baptism. And the thing is, I, me, I believe. I know. me, I'm the junkyard dog. I'm the sarcastic one. So if somebody comes up to me, and I've done it once. <laughs> well, baptism. Salt water, fresh water, tap water. Bottle spring water. You mean if I take my bottle and sprinkle you and sprinkle everybody here? I told him at the flea market, if I take this bottle of water and go around sprinkling people, they're going to go to heaven. No. <laughs> uh -uh. And it's supposed to be immersion. And the thing is, well, well, they don't believe in immersion. They have sprinkled, you know, four in the forehead. Well, why not? Well, our church has to. Now you got two doctrines that are false. You got church and baptism. That's not it. The receive Jesus is not getting wet. It gets you wet. So it does. It's a public testimony that I'm telling everybody, I've heard, now one question would be, when you're in the water, or you're about to get in the water, you would ask that convert, have you received Christ as your Savior? And then you explain to the people, this would be the death, burial, and resurrection. Like Philip did with the Ethiopian unit. Now Romans 6.23, we're talking about, now this is a perfect verse for receiving. This is a perfect verse uh, in our early age, this would not be used right now, this verse we're going to do, Romans 6, 23. Because we still have to get through Thanksgiving. That's right, Thanksgiving. But since there is no Thanksgiving, and the other day, the place that, the website that keeps all my pictures online, so I don't even have a photo, I had a picture of their icon wearing a Santa hat. And I'm like, where's the pilgrim outfit? You skipped the pilgrim outfit. And stores already had Christmas stuff in July. But we're coming upon a season of gift giving. We're coming upon a season with presents. And this would be a great verse to use, Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death. You know, you're going to have to work for that credit card bill you're going to back up. I always do that. You know, hey, you got to pay for that stuff you just bought. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And what better way to, to explain that with John 1.12 is, if I have a gift, what do, you got, what do you do to get that gift I have for you? you got to receive it. you got to take it. You. It's that plain and simple. No one else. When I grew up, like I said, we don't do Christmas, but the tag would say to and then from. If it's got your name on it, nobody else has the business of opening that but you. God has a gift for you. And it's for you. I know he says whatsoever. He's got, everybody has a tag that says to you, whatever your name is. I'll put down the Bible, whosoever. And it's from God. And to receive the gift. That's what we're talking about in John 1.12. Now, 2 Peter 3.9. 2 Peter 3.9. Mark this. Second Peter 3.9. Now, 2 Peter 3, 9. It's all about receiving. If you don't receive Christ, you're not going to heaven. That's right. And if you don't receive Him, what, what is the, the, the word that opposes receive? Reject. So 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promises. As some man counts slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
God doesn't want us all to go to hell. He's reached out. He's done his half. Jesus Christ has done what he could for mankind. Suffering and dying being that sacrificial lamb of God. He shed God's blood that we may have eternal. It's been done by God. He doesn't want to reject you. He doesn't want to cast you now. We, those, I should say we, we're not going to have. Those who reject <laughs> Jesus Christ as their Savior has cast themselves off into hell because they won't believe. Here is God with that gift that we talked about, Romans 6. Here's the gift. Again, you Amen. you either got to, I don't want it, or yes, thank you, I'll take you. Now back to John 1, 12. I think we're going to do it. Another, let's see what we can do for this here, but we're not going to get into the next part of this verse. But 112. Now I'll talk about the word, but we'll, we'll, we'll do it next week. Refresher. John 112. But as many as received him. Now, just like I said, we're going to make it next week, but that many. It does not say all. Don't think that everybody, when you get to heaven, is going to be there. Loved ones may not be there. I've got family beyond a shadow of a doubt, unless the mercy of God had reached down into their hearts. I won't, yeah, I never know, but I'm just saying that my entire family is not going to be there. Now, I know family right now that's there. Um, Tracy and I were talking about somebody today in my family. And I don't know. I doubt, my own reason, I doubt it. But many, and we're, like I said, we'll, we'll get into this next week, but going back to what we're doing, but as many as received him, salvation is something to be received in John 1.12. You, as many as receive him, to them, the ones that received, gave him power to become the sons of God. When you receive Christ as your Savior, John 1, 12, not only are you saved, which is great, but we'll get into this another time, you become a child of God. You are adopted into the family. But today, receiving that's the key. That's the key word today. You cannot walk on by Christ. I don't know why that stupid song came in my heart. Walk on by Christ. And not do nothing and then turn around and say, well, I'm going to heaven. Many do. Many people think they're good works, they're whatever they have, but Jesus. Have you ever? Now, here's the thing. Now, remember, you got a class of life. But here's a good opening to start. Have you ever received Christ as your Savior? Now, if they say yes, find out how they received it. Okay? Um, when God reaches out, the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ is your Lord. Or when somebody's giving you a gift, how do you receive it? <laughs> Thank you very much, stupid sweater. You got me over again, your sweater. Her gifts are always so to act, feel it's just gifts. Yeah, I was broke. That's not, that's not the proper attitude. You get a gift. Someone gives you a gift, and this, like I said, this is the perfect. This is the perfect time. Oh, I hope the receipt's in there, so I can go get the money. Like they got the thing today, which, which turned out to be horrible. It's gift cards. Gift cards. People get gift cards. They run to the store and get the cash, which you can't do that. I'm told now. How did you receive the gift? All right. And in the Bible, there's a proper way of receiving. So. When you walk up to somebody and say, have you received Christ? Yes. Don't walk away. Investigate. Do a scientific thing. Go through all the process of experimentation and discovery and resources. What did this guy receive? And is it according to the Bible? 
Now, when people say, have you received Christ? Yes, and then you walk away. Don't walk away. And that's where tracks can be find out. You know, oh, I'm Catholic. Okay, well, or I'm this. Or I had a experience, you know, electrical feelings coming through my body. Or I, we had a guy one time, near-death experience. If not, die. Uh, the one I'm thinking about, man, this guy, we don't even want anywhere around us, never mind our daughter. And he didn't say, oh, I'm saved. Buddy, I don't even want to talk to you. That's not receiving Christ when you've got that kind of thing. We must look at, we must study to show ourselves the proof unto God. A man, that, 2 Timothy 2, is it 2 Timothy 2.15? 2 Timothy. Yes, yeah, 2 Timothy 2.15, which you will not find in a modern Bible. Now, May Baptist drop on the floor, rocking around, having a heart attack. If maybe, I don't think I'm taking this verse out of miscontext. Some may. 2.15, 2 Timothy. But I think this applies, and this is not in my notes. Study to show thyself approved under God. That's us here at the table. I'm not talking about lost man. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly divine the word of truth. Now let's say, okay, have you received Christ? Yeah. All right, have a good day. God bless you. Which second John tells you, be careful about giving God's blessing. You see that guy at the great white throne judgment. And God calls you up and say, you dealt with this man? Yes, Lord. I dealt with him. I asked him, has he received Christ? Well, he said yes. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Talking to that person you talked to, I never knew you. And you're standing there like, well, he did not receive the right Christ. Now you just met, been made ashamed, though you're saved, though you're going to go to New Jerusalem, you just tossed somebody off in the lake of fire because you didn't investigate, you didn't study to find out what he was, what he was believing. And that will happen. we got to study the person, not only the Bible, to say, is it what he is believing truly the Word of God? And then whether we talk to him with the Bible or we give him the... Listen, there's all kinds of gospel tracts that we can hand the man. Hey, all right, listen. This is what you said. It, it, it's biblically incorrect. You go through your tract. All right, here's a tract. Please read it. Study it. All right, you finished what you're supposed to do. But you just leave somebody off. Oh, I received Christ. Okay. And they didn't receive Christ. They receive something what they believe, whatever it is that's not Jesus. Now you're in trouble. That's one of the things. Yeah, that's what. what that's one of the things that here, this studying to show ourselves. There are. I don't know how many there are. Reasons to reject, reject Jesus Christ, thinking that you're okay and right. Satan slick. Satan will give you anything you want. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Satan will say, I have ways. I am the liar. I'll give you damn, damnable life, and you'll never reach the Father. He's complete opposite. He's the antichrist of, of Jesus Christ. And Billions of people have in their mind today, right now, if I were to die, I'm okay, I'm right. And they'll be sorely upset to realize when they die and was buried, wake up in hell. And they'll say to Jesus at the judgment, the great white stone judgment, Lord, didn't I, didn't I do that, didn't I do that? And Jesus will say, depart from me, ye that work in iniquity religion, science, whatever you want to do, I never knew you. And when we come up to somebody and just say, so we can put a notch in our belt of how many people we witnessed through this week, have you received Christ? Yes. Oh, good. That's one notch. Well, you know, I, I talked to 26 people this week about Jesus. All of them said yes. And then I would say, and I haven't had anybody do it, I would say in sarcasm, well, how many are actually going to heaven? And then he would give you that puppy dog look. What? What do you mean? They're all going to heaven. 
Just because they said they received Jesus? Is there not another Jesus, Paul says? Is there not another gospel? A gospel. Gospel? Is there not another spirit? So, like I said, we're dealing with learning the Bible in this Bible study, but we're also dealing with evangelism. We've got to make sure we just can't, all right, pass the buck and move on to somebody else. There's one man. I don't want to get his name. He's going through a lot of trouble with it. I'm praying for him. He's got a surety. It's beyond a shadow of a doubt. If he were to die, he's going to heaven. And over the years, you know, I, I, well, years. But over the time, you know, I look at him and I was like, I'm not sure your conduct, but um, but the thing is, we have to make sure, and I'm not going to let up until you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. That's right. If you don't confess the Lord Jesus, you may be saved, all right? But James says, faith without works is dead. You're not going to come to me, say, baptism. You're not going to come to me, church. You're not going to come to me, I do. I'm not going to take that as the safe answer. Other Christians may. But have you received him? Have you? Because go back to John 1, 12. Here is the proper answer. When you, and I said, you can ask, have you received Jesus? But there's a proper response. But as many as received Him. That's a pronoun for a person. A male. It's not as many as received her. It's not a female. That's right. You can't take a female answer. You can't as many as receive it. One of the prophets says, it is not God. Oh, I think it goes there. And it would be the church, the baptism, and everything else you can throw in there. Alright? Sir, have you received Jesus Christ? Yes, I have. You might tell me a testimony on how you received him. Tracy's seen me do that. And you listen to the testimony and he's like, okay, now, how do you rightly divide the word of truth? Did he go the Bible way? Or did she go anti-Bible? Now you know how to deal with it. They go on the way of Jesus Christ, the way of salvation, brought by Jesus Christ. Say, amen, glory to God. I'm glad to meet you, brother. And most times they'll be even pleased that you're out there interested in their soul. They're like, wow, we don't meet a lot of people like you. Oh, I'm so thankful. And you'll carry on a conversation and then there'll be people that, well, you know, whatever, they fill in the blank with not Bible. Now you gotta, I mean, you can't hammer them, you can't blast them, you can't blow them up, you can't kill them. You gotta be nice. I can be nice. <laughs> Believe it or not, I can be nice. Now you gotta show them with the Bible or a gospel check the errors of their way. You know, we, I, I can tell one story one time, not kind of witnessing what we're doing, but, this woman came up to us and she took the book on the signs, healings. Oh, this book is going to help me. No, in my... speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. And she walks away. She's telling. I believe in this. I believe in tongues, and this book is going to edify me. I'm like, it was against. It's it. against the tongues movement. It's going to edify. It's a... She took the book thinking that it supported what she did. Oh. And the thing is, when you look at that. She came to us with something that's not the truth, not the way, not the truth, not the life. We provided with her the source that you're wrong. We got stuff about Jehovah Witnesses. We got stuff about Catholics. We got stuff about, you're wrong. Here. Or you're wrong. Can I show you in the Bible? That's right. She didn't even talk to us. She just took the book off the table and left. But, but that's what she said when she was picking up the book. That's the resources. I mean, we could have just said, okay, tongues, that, that's, that's good, I, but we didn't. We, had the, we didn't open our mouth at all. We had the resources. That's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And you can't, be, not, you can't be rude and crude, let me say that first, but you can't be wimpy and, and say, okay, have a good day. If we had said that book isn't talking about what you believe in, 
she would probably have put it back on the table instead of even opening it up and getting the first chapter. You know, so second John, some word got in there. Second yeah. John, and I'm, I'm going to show you the error of your way of that way too. See, Paul said to the church, "I caught you with God." Second John, and. Tracy masters the fact that she laughs at me sometimes because with sarcastically, I can do wonders with people. And they don't even know it. That's what I enjoy about it. This second job. And who knows? I mean, I could, I could fire people down. I could shoot you down with all ammunition. I've done that before. But even sarcasm works. Second John... Uh, I'm going to start in 10. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, all right? Have you received Jesus Christ as you see? I mean, have you received Jesus? Well, yeah, I'm baptized. Yeah, I'm filling the blank. That's another doctrine. All right, have a good day. See ya. Receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. That means have a good day. Have a good day. God bless you. You're welcome. A lot of times, when people sneeze, I will not say God bless you because I don't know that verse right there. I don't know if you're saved or not. I'll say Mizute. I don't know what it means. I should, but I looked it up one time. It doesn't mean anything with God. But uh, if somebody is in error against God and you wish him Godspeed, God day, have a good day. I will never tell a Jehovah Witness have a good day as they're walking down my driveway. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I want to talk to you some more. You got to be careful, because watch. Verse 11. Ready? For he that biddeth him God's feet, you're welcome, thank you, have a good day, is partaker of his evil deeds. Now, not talking about Jehovah Witnesses, talking about you have asked somebody if they received Christ, or Jesus, or mm -hmm. and they say, yeah, and you didn't study them to find them out, have a good day, thank you, great to be say whatever. And they are not in the doctrine of salvation. Look at the charge you get. When you show up in the judgment seat of Christ, you will suffer loss. That man now, is your Christian, now he thinks he's totally great and fine because he's been approved by a God. He's been approved by a Christian. He's cast off in a lake of fire that burns forever. You will be standing there. Remember, all tears are not wiped away to after New Jerusalem shows up. We will be in tears, as I said. We, when we see our loved ones, even if we witnessed to them and gave them all we can, when God casts them off in the lake of fire, we're still going to be in tears. That's it. That's forever. But woe be, Ezekiel says, or Jeremiah, the blood of their lives will be upon our fingertips if we don't do it right. Now, there are churches out there that they go out and do their door knocking. They go out there and do it only for look how many people we got. We got a $10 bill hidden underneath one of the seats of the pews. If you will come in our church and sit on that pillow that has $10, oh, glory to God. That's not the way. And if you're dealing with somebody, going back to our contact, if you're dealing with somebody, yes, I received Christ, find out. And if they're in error, not of the doctrine Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures go eat all the world and preach the gospel that's the gospel if that's not the belief they are in error you will be in error if you don't try to correct their error isn't it great how wonderful all the things we're going to be judged about and they're never in messages The judgment seat of Christ and great white zone judgment, there's going to be a lot more judgment than what people think they're going to be. And like I said, if you ain't got time to say, hey, I'd like to give you a gospel track. Oh, I'm saved. Find briefly what they believe. Right. And if it's not according to the scripture, say, well, I'd like to still give you that. Now, see, now you're being you're being wise. Oh, I'd still like to give you this rate. Right. You're not knocking them. You're not kicking them. You're just saying, you know what? I don't think so. If you read this, there you go. And you don't have to have a long out carried conversation. 
you've done your part to, to fix the error the way. Now it's back on their shoes. Are they going to read what the Bible says? Or let's see. Now you, you will answer before God and say, "Well, God, I asked him. I didn't believe what he really told me was right. I left him with a gospel track." There you go. You left him with opportunity. Let's pray. Lord God, I pray that we do right. Lord, I, I guarantee just an in innocency, Lord, as witnessing the people, I've not done the full charge. Lord, I, probably people I've witnessed to are probably going to go to Lake of Fire because of my error, because of my sin, because of rushing time, whatever it is, impatience, Lord. And Lord, I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray you work on the hearts of Ron, for D'Angelo, for Brenda, Lord God, that we be here all together, unity of your word. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen.